Good to see everyone. My name is Blair Murphy and I'm uh, currently the Acting Executive Director of Arlington Arts Center. And I'm really happy to be here tonight for the second of two artist talks that we're doing as part of Solos 2020, which is up in the galleries right now. Uh, so we'll be hearing tonight from Rebecca Rebus Rogers, Constance Simon, and Heidi Zinizek, um, who each have a solo show up as part of Solos 2020. Solos is one of AAC's longest running programs, and we do an open call every year for artists to propose mm -hmm. solo, um, solo style shows in our galleries. Um, and we have a couple outside jurors typically for those. So this year we worked with Terrence Washington, um, who was previously the National Gallery and is currently at Next Haven in New Haven, and Michael Benevento from Current Gallery in Baltimore. And they selected um, the six straight projects that we have right now. Um, the exhibitions are up through December 19th, so you can come and see the shows in the gallery spaces. We're open Wednesday through Saturday from 12 to 5. Um, you can come anytime during those hours. We considered doing an RSVP system, but if you've been to AAC before, we have a fair amount of space. So if you come during our regular gallery hours, um, obviously we have three, well, two floors that are open right now, um, uh, eight galleries open, so you can walk around and, and um, you know, we only have a handful of people at any given time and we're doing lots of new, uh, new cleaning regimen and um, new state health and safety precautions as well. So please do come and see the shows when you have a chance. Um, we did have artist talks a couple weeks ago with the other three artists and those will be online soon. So we are recording these talks as well, which I mentioned at the beginning. If you would prefer not to be on the recording, you can always turn your video off. So just a heads up that we are recording. Um, I'm also happy to be joined tonight by Amanda Hiram Murphy, who is the new Interim Exhibitions Director at AAC. She'll be running our exhibitions um, while I'm in the Acting Director role. So really happy to be working with Amanda and to have her here tonight. And we'll be starting off tonight. Yeah, <laughs> that's everybody. Um, we'll be starting off tonight with Rebecca Rivas Rogers and then um, hearing from Constance Simon and then hearing from Heidi Zinizek. Um, We'll be switching off the screen sharing for each artist, so hopefully that'll all go smoothly, but obviously if we do have any technical issues, we appreciate your patience. Um, so we'll move next to Heidi Zinizek, our third and final artist for the evening. Hello. So Heidi is a uh, sculptress from Iowa City, Iowa, where she spent her formative years on a farm surrounded by dirt, cows, corn, and rust. She'll talk more about that, I think. She has exhibited throughout the US and Iceland and participated in numerous residencies, including the um, Haima Franconia Sculpture Park and Salem Artworks. In 2016, she was a fellow at the Lungu School in Iceland and has twice been invited to exhibit at the Icelandic Light Festival. She holds a BFA from the University of Iowa, an MA from Eastern Illinois University, and is currently an MFA candidate at the University of Maryland College Park. So thanks for being here, Heidi. Thank you. Let's see. Um, okay, can you guys see everything good? Mm -hmm. So the show is titled Bullet Points and is the result of looking back at my memories of Midwestern hunting culture and re-examining my complex relationship with life and death. I wanted to look past the labels of good and bad and take a closer look at some of the complexities of deer hunting, such as ritual, tradition, community, identity, necessity, sport, power, gender roles, sexualization. These topics are all present in the work, but the fact that I became desensitized to the graphic nature of the process at such an early age, and now as an adult, I feel this simultaneous seduction and repulsion towards it is where most of my curiosity lies. My main challenge was figuring out how like how do I get the viewer past the shock factor of blood and entrails and carcass and whatnot um, and be able to bring us to a point where they can consider the work in a deeper sense um, and find some of the beauty that I find in it and not just see blood and immediately walk back out of the gallery. My solution was to use um, 
humor, which is always kind of an underlying thing in my work. And then also to weave this graphic imagery into more of a domestic space, reminiscent of a, like a rumpus room or basement. Um, and this also is like representative of the integration of this family tradition and how the rituals are really woven into our everyday lives. Um, in the show, I exaggerate it, obviously, um, to a pretty funny extent. So no, we don't literally have like meat bean bags in our homes or blood paintings on our walls, which you will see. So we have this shed on our family farm that we call the deer shed. And this is where they bring the deer back to be skinned and processed um, after the hunt. Some of my earliest childhood memories are of the patterns of blood that would streak across the concrete floor. The men of my family would laugh and drink bush light and go about their business, um, like skinning the deer. And then I would make a game out of tracing the blood swoops with my boot. Um, so as a part of an ongoing series, I started in 2016 titled Open Season. I tape canvas to the floor of um, during hunting season to catch all of these gestures of blood and hair and mud that the hunters would drag through the deer shed, creating these huge, amazing like blood prints or blood paintings. The texture and details in these paintings are super awesome, um, especially years where it snows. So the hunters drag in clumps of snow and it melts onto the canvas and creates little moments of like watercolor um, gestures. Um, and there are there's always like dog prints and footprints and hair clumps um, and some interesting swooping moments where the door kind of like squeegeed the blood around as it um, as the door would like swing open and close and then as it ages the color of the blood continues to change as you can tell from the difference in these photos so the main questions that were going through my mind during this whole uh creation of the show is like Shouldn't I have been traumatized by all of the blood and guts? And uh, like, was I groomed from an early age to form this disconnect? Or was it more of an innocent familiarity with death just from growing up on the farm and like witnessing it? Or perhaps like a respect for the need to feed a family? Um, so just thinking like how much is nature and how much is nurture? So those ideas were like the main inspiration behind this piece. Um, on the left, it's titled Spring, Summer, Winter, Fall, Fall, Winter. <laughs> and it's kind of hard to tell in this video, but I created this large picture frame using lenticular printing. So as you walk around the piece, the photos change between um, like photos of entrails and deer carcasses and um, pictures of my brothers and I as children posed with the dead trophy bucks and then other family photos of everyday life growing up on the farm. So here are some stills from the piece. You can kind of get a sense of, you know, some more charming farm images and then you know, contrasted with these more bloody photos. So next is this bar moment. So the shape of this bar is based off of the bar in my grandpa's basement that my uncle built in the 70s. I was thinking about um, just the whole, how much of a tradition and ritual like this deer hunting activity is for my family. 
I think maybe my favorite part of this whole show is this little bush light fountain in here. Um, earlier I mentioned bush light and I just think it's a pretty iconic when I think of the Midwest and my family. So Bush teams up with Big Buck Hunter, which is a hunting video game that's really common in bars. And um, they come out with this limited edition orange hunting can. And the money they make off of these cans is donated to wildlife conservation. And I found out that this is the same with hunting licenses and tax from guns and ammo and whatnot. Um, and yearly, this raises around $800,000 for wildlife conservation. So this bush can is um, representing that part of, you know, what I was uncovering about the deer hunting and um, some of the parts we wouldn't notice or uh, learn about unless you dig into it. Um, and deer hunting also helps manage the ecosystems by preventing overpopulation. And on the other side of the bar is this bronze salami, um, a trophy of sorts, I was thinking of it. And I cast this from an actual salami from my home, um, the deer salami. And it, it was important to me to emphasize hunting for the meat and the history of well, also, yeah, people's disconnect between where their food comes from and um, also touching on this idea of uh, the history of like being able to provide for one's family with hunting and how that's woven into the idea of becoming a man when you shoot your first buck. And it also touches on how much of a gendered activity hunting is in my family which leads us to this last installation moment. Um, it's titled Shrine and it's all centered around this deer bust. So the deer bust is the first and only deer my mother ever shot from the one time she ever went hunting. And my dad had it mounted and it hung in our house while growing up. But sometime last winter, I found it all dusty in our garage and it was like missing its eyeballs and whatnot. And um, my mom just gave it to me because she apparently had no, um, no attachment to it. So I, oh, here's a little video. It's kind of hard to tell. I don't have the best documentation yet. Um, Yeah, so I made it into this literal like trophy buck by casting the antlers in bronze yeah. and polishing the tips as if people had been rubbing them for good luck and just thinking about, you know, other old kind of uh, trophies and statues I've seen. Um, and then I remembered this moment of my uncle wearing all of these beaded bracelets and he called them karma beads. And he would always share them with me when I was younger. And that inspired me to um, put this, well, the karma beads, yeah, they were made out of different crystals that, and like um, gemstones and whatnot that meant different things. So it inspired me to put this cluster of tiger eye coming out of one of the deer's eye sockets. Um, and a uh, tiger eye is said to help um, separate emotion from your decision making. And so in the other eye socket is a buckeye nut, which is also known for um, good luck, a token of good luck. So I was thinking of this kind of like good luck oracle deer thing um, that you leave offerings to in hopes of a fruitful hunt. And the TV below is from my grandpa's basement same as inspiration as the shape of the bar um, and is set to static as if waiting for a sign or message from this deer deity to come through. Um, now on top of the TV is more cast bronze deer meat and uh, this framed photo of a deer which is 
you can see right here. Um, and I felt that it was important to include this one image of a live deer in the woods referencing this appreciation and honoring of the animal and, and of nature. Um, and then using the entrails images that I have as fabric for the bean bags, I made this cozy moment for the viewer to sit and participate in paying respects to this deer. So I feel like, I feel like, um, everything I was discovering while making this show, I could like, you know, take that and really dive into it and create a whole other show on its own. Um, so I just keep thinking of it like, for comparison, if I was writing a book, I feel like I have only written the table of contents. And that's how I feel about this show. It's like, I just have so much more to explore and dive into. Thank you. Question? Yeah. Well, your last comment, I sort of had a question just about, I know some of the pieces in the exhibition are things that you, I know most of the work is new, but some of them were sort of areas that you had been working on. So the, the stretched canvas, um, but I, I mean, this is, is this the first time you've brought the components together in this way? Yeah, um, so I, yeah, I started collecting the deer canvases in 2016, just really interested and amazed by them, um, found them so beautiful, but I hadn't really figured out what to do with them yet. And I just thought this was the perfect way to like stretch it as this canvas and hang, hang it as a painting. Um, again like making it more comfortable for the viewer like oh look at this beautiful painting and then you realize like oh my gosh that's that's blood um so kind of just like tricking the viewer into separate elements of comfort um yeah yeah it also too strikes me as sort of you talk some about the gendered nature of hunting and that being something in the installation and then the painting has this very sort of jackson pollock-esque which also yeah. sort of, yeah, the similar like gender dynamics of that kind of art, art history. Yeah. Um, I wish someday, I hope that I can have a show of just those, those blood paintings because every year they are like really extraordinary and different and I just find them super amazing. Yeah. I wonder uh, how your family feels about all of your explorations um that's kind of funny because it's it's nice because it's an access point into my life as an artist for them and it's the same with a bunch of my other work i deal with um ideas from growing up on a farm and that's always nice to have have that um be able to have those conversations with them i guess yeah they're really excited about about everything curious and they don't they're like I don't get it but I respect it <laughs> yeah yeah we have a question in chat uh, from Beth and she had a sort of related question which is do you think an observer would think that you're satirizing or condemning the hunting culture um, she says the way that you talked about it is sort of more sympathetic and connected than she, than she expected um, which I found to be an interesting line with the work, sort of how, but I think in some ways that, I don't know, yeah, the viewer's expectation of what you're, um, what yeah. your job is. And this is the first time showing this work with such graphic imagery, and I think maybe it perhaps comes off as satirical because I was using a bit of humor um, for the viewer's expense, like, again, trying to make it more comfortable um yeah i worked really i feel like i tried super hard to make it not seem as if i was um pro hunting or against hunting and just still in this like moment of figuring out the ins and outs of this culture um and i think maybe the the text is important the wall text when 
entering into this space. Um, but there are definitely parts that I could agree with, like, um, like the, I mean, I have some other pieces that didn't fit into the show that are definitely um, condemning the sexualization of like women and guns, you know? Um, so I guess there is moments of that. Did that answer the question? <laughs> I think so. I think you, yeah, there's a certain ambiguity to it. And then the viewer kind of fills that in to some extent. Also, um, ah, Beth says, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another question from Lisa, what are some of the ideas you want to explore next, I guess, related to the work? It does seem like there's sort of, I can see like the different worlds within the world of the installation, but um, are there specific ideas that you have in yeah, um, the whole idea of hunting as a sport and as like game and the fact that there are these wildly popular deer hunting games um, and the idea of trophy hunting, I would love to explore th that. Um, and then also I've been looking a lot at um, hunting clothing that's specifically made for children and I think it's very bizarre in things like um like a shirt that says daddy's hunting princess or something you know and it's like pink and mixed with this like hunting imagery but also mixing in this princessy stuff so I think there's a lot like so much with gender that I can dive into um and then some more experiential stuff I would love to do. Like I've personally have never been hunting, but I would love to go, whether it's just to witness or whether it would like figuring out if I actually could kill a deer myself, you know? Yeah. I am so fascinated by the fact that you've never been hunting before. I'm really surprised actually. Yeah, and I mean, I kind of, with the sausage, the bronze sausage, I talked about it a little bit. It's just, in my family specifically, it's such a gendered activity. And like, I wasn't really invited. And like, my mom went once and she just happened to like shoot this big buck, but she had no desire to go again. And I, yeah, I was I'm just never included. I'm so sorry to like interrupt like this, but I think the I was trying to type the message or the question and then I was like, I'm just gonna ask her. Um, I'm really interested in that gendered nature of who gets taught, who can kill and what that means about them and maybe even their virility. And I wondered if you could talk a little bit more about uh, the gendered nature of, of hunting, but then also how you are working in a medium that I think is stereotypically thought of as being very male, like sculpture um, and and approaching a very gendered activity from a very gendered uh, medium as a woman. Can you repeat the first part of the question again? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Like, so you're, I'm, I'm curious about how you position yourself as an artist and specifically as a female artist, um, approaching hunting from the standpoint of also being a sculptor like it seems like you're embodying a very like almost like a male persona would you do, would you agree with that or not so much that is really interesting to think about um like the main thing when i've been making all this work is just these memories are coming really rapidly and then when i do go home to gather this physical data or evidence and like materials you know i'm constantly taking videos and um photographs and collecting things um i don't really know how to answer that <laughs> sorry maybe i'm a little confused by what you're asking but um, maybe it's just something to, to to think about moving forward because i think it's a really interesting position that you adopt i mean i can't help but um think about the fact that you're approaching all of this subject matter and your medium as a female and I think that that's an actually really interesting place to be operating from. 
Oh yeah, like especially in casting, I feel like metal casting is this very like macho male dominated medium and um and I do think about that with my other work, um, working with sewing things. Um, so I think that'll probably come into it. Came in with a little bit with the bean bags, um, but the, these traditionally women's crafts versus um, these more masculine activities and professions, and yeah. Yeah, it's interesting thinking about the, in some ways, hunting as a gendered thing because you're also, the installation, at least as it is in the show, kind of highlights the domestic, like, I don't know, not the domestic sphere in a gendered sense, but like spaces that are sort of interior. So the bar and the wall and the, the TV room. So it's it's interesting kind of thinking like it, it, it kind of deals with like hunting as this thing that kind of is then in the, in home in a way or like it that yeah that boundary between like the outside and the inside sort of yeah and I mean the solution to make it like a home had to do with the graphic imagery but also um I love working in installation so I felt that would be really effective and I was figuring out how to bring all these pieces together um and Oh, my brain just went blank. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. What else would sort of a, your experience of hunting is more from that perspective of like not being out in the woods while it's happening, but being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just this witness of it all. I have one more weird observation and that's about enacting violence on the viewer. <laughs> because I think that uh, the show is shocking, but also gentle. And it's really interesting to see those two things coexisting. Um, and I think I, I most noticed it in the bust of the deer um, and the, the sight of this eye that looks like it's dripping some kind of, um, it, I mean, it looks like I know it's resin, but it looks kind of pussy and it's kind of disturbing. I And it made me think about um, this opening sequence in the movie An Andalusian Dog by Buñuel, where yeah. an eye gets sliced open by a razor and this idea of the visual assault of the viewer and um, that being kind of like an experience that is uh, traumatic. And I, I wonder if that's a goal of yours to like shock us at the same time like horror movie style kind of scares or yeah uh i don't i don't think well that's hard to say i want to say no because i but it's hard to tell because i'm so desensitized to the graphic nature of these images so i just find like all of those close-up photos of entrails i'm i find them like so beautiful so it wasn't until showing them to a friend and she was like horrified and that's when I realized like oh uh I need to like tone it down a lot so to me maybe I failed a little bit but to me walking in there it's like there's it's like very cozy and comfy and no shock factor at all but uh, that dripping eye I did I do love a bit of like gross nastiness and I use that a lot in all of my other work contrasting that with a bunch of like more girly feminine materials um so i think that's just naturally wove its way into the work um but i think i think i remembered what i was going to say earlier so um this just taking this violence that's really inherent in hunting and weaving it into this every day that just was my childhood on a farm. I think that is embodied in the the lenticular piece with the photos switching and that piece is very nostalgic for me like the the feeling of it. So I'm curious if you guys got that from witnessing it without you know just these like 
all of this childhood moments and then, you know, these other more grotesque images woven in. Can I answer that? <laughs> so I think the overwhelming like 70s um, basement feel to it really does make it feel like less threatening and homely and nostalgia. I think the, the, the one of the big feelings when you walk in there is of nostalgia. And I think that really softens the, the, the idea or the images of violence. You know, there's no actual images of violence, but the blood, I think that really makes it feel less threatening. And then, and things like, I mean, the, the meat bean bags, they're not spiky things, they're, they're bean bags. They're the softest, <laughs> and they're huge. They're so like, you would just sink in them. I wonder, do you yeah. know, did anybody sit in them? I was never in this space with other people other than myself. Um, so I don't know. That was one part that I was pretty upset about with COVID. I was like, nobody's going to sit in my bean bags now. <laughs> and I think the other thing for me that really sort of softened everything and, and brought in that 70s is the wood paneling that you put on the wall behind the painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was like, I love wood paneling. And that was very much an aesthetic choice to kind of weave all these moments together. And I loved that the space already had a wooden floor. Um, so I think there's like five different kinds of wood paneling in there. Um, so because I didn't want it matchy, but they definitely unify the the separate installation moments. And, and in some way, it's not really clear what you added and what was already there, which is brilliant. I was really struck with those images, you were, like the childhood images and the like viscera images. To me, that really brought out uh, the ambiguity of what you were talking about with like this tension between, you know, is this just this violent, weird thing that, you know, Americans do? Or is it like, no, this is like literally how people fed themselves for a good chunk of human history. Um, and is like keeping this tradition alive any different than like making your own paint instead of buying it at Hobby Lobby or, or something like, um, you know, obviously it's a loaded, there's all these, there's all this other baggage too. But um, so for me, I guess it was less about like softening, like, oh, is this too gross or is it like mediated for me? And more like it just, it does kind of an interesting job of, this is a part of life for a lot of people still, and it was part of life for people for a very long time that just kind of exist. It's like we're separate from death now. You know, people die, they go to a hospital, and like it's this part of life that for most of us, we don't even have to think about where our food comes from. But for a segment of the population, there's this kind of ritual reminding them of how people used to get food. Um, so I feel like that came out through just the kind of that collection of objects and installation. Perfect. Thanks. Um, yeah, you brought up the, the photos, childhood photos. Um, that was just, it was such a weird moment when I was happened to be looking through these boxes of, of film and then I started finding so many photos of me and my siblings posed with these dead deer and you know I kind of turned the blame to my parents or like started questioning them I'm like what is this why would they do that like you know trying to figure out the motive behind it or like like I've definitely seen family friends bring their their toddler up to a deer carcass and be like pet the deer and they're like nice deer you know and I just I guess I'm still uncovering all of these, these feelings and like, sometimes I'm questioning like, do am I, do I feel guilty that I'm not, like more repulsed by this and like, how you know, I'm I'm there's just so much for me to dig into with this project still. Well, thank you. That was fantastic. Um, 
thanks to everybody for joining us tonight. And um, yeah, it was really great to hear all three artists talk about their work. And like I've mentioned, I think a couple times, you can come see the shows at Arlington Arts Center. Um, we are open Wednesday through Saturday, 12 to five. The exhibitions are up through December 19th. And this talk and the talk we did a couple weeks ago are both have both been recorded. So we will have these up on our website soon. Um, if you missed the first ones and want to check them out. And thank you so much to everybody for joining us. Um, this is our final exhibition program for the year, but we will be doing more online uh, programs in the new year. We continue to function sort of in person with exhibitions and then mostly online with programs and classes and workshops. So please check out our website, arlingtonartcenter.org, if you um, are interested and want to learn more. So thanks again to City Artists for joining us and thanks to everybody for being here. And have a good night. <laughs>